What's going on, everybody? Chef here. Welcome back to the channel. All right, guys, I'm making a video that many of you have requested talking about my strategy, what goes into my pre-market process, what I look for when it comes to drawing out my zones, and then more specifically, how I react when price enters my zones, what I'm looking for on smaller time frames, when I will get into a trade, when I will get out of a trade, okay, how this all formulates with my entire strategy, and how it's been profitable for me for quite some time. I'm gonna break everything down for you. Like I said, I hope this really helps you, just gives you a little bit better of an understanding, and you can maybe implement this into your daily strategy, guys. So let's get right into it. First off, we are talking about the supply and demand zones. Now guys, this is what my chart will look like. I'll break it down for you. Before we get into, just wanna give you a brief overview of supply and demand. It seems like it went through a fad on, you know, FinTwit in the trading community talking about supply and demand. Just like, you know, there's every, every, every uh, everything has a fad guys, right? So in 2021, 2022, it was all about options. Lately, it's been switched over to futures, more importantly, okay, to work with a prop firm and get funded. And like I said, we went through a time where people were, everybody was talking about supply and demand, and it seemed like it kind of just slowly started to fade away. But I draw these zones all the time. There's a, two main reasons why I draw these zones, okay? It's Price is always looking for balance, right? Now, if I zoom out, you can see we are in a, in a period of consolidation, right? But price always continues to move up and then it comes back down and then it moves up and then it comes back down and it's always looking for confluence, right? When it can find another set of buyers, when it's gonna you know, reach its max set of sellers, when there is you know balance between both buyers and sellers. Now guys, even in a trending market, nothing just moves straight up, right? There are pullbacks and so forth. And what you will tend to see in a trending market, okay, is price will move from one zone, it'll move up, reject off another zone, kind of consolidate a bit, break through, and then once what was old resistance will act as new support, okay? So this is what I look for when it comes to, I'm gonna break everything down now, what goes into this, guys? So first of all, I draw my zones on the 15 minute time frame, okay? Now, some of this is preference. I've just gotten really used to how price moves from a 15 minute time frame. Um, I will most likely do this just on SPY and QQQ. I will look for a different type of setups uh, intraday when it comes to like, you know, the other tickers that I trade, Apple, Amazon, Tesla, AMD, NVIDIA, and, and so forth. What I'll do is I'll grab, you know, my, my purple rectangle over here, and I'll just look for areas where there's, there's price confluence, right? So, I like to see where there's multiple, you know, you know, um, entries and eg or exits into the zones. Like right here, you have two and so forth. And I'll look for up here. You have you have two, right? And like I said, this will vary depending on what we're looking at when it comes to market open, okay? Um, and I'll try to basically just have two upper zones and two lower zones, okay? So as you can see right here. Um, you know, price had reacted off this area. This was once a zone that was kind of broken through, right? We came up, it probably rejected a little bit on a smaller time frame, consolidated, and eventually broke up, you know, broke through it. Obviously, overnight it's kind of came back down. And then once what was, you know, once previous resistance evidently acted as resistance once again. So it's very simple, guys. If you just look at these couple of zones, you know, that I've drawn out, like if I had drawn that drawn this out. Uh, you know, on Wednesday, obviously Thursday, price reacted very well to it. Now, before we take a dive into the smaller time frames, guys, I, I want to talk about this. This, uh, I guess, the specificity of these zones, right? If that's even a word. But you know, people say, well, well, where do you do it? Is it the top of the wick? Is it the bottom of the candle close? Is it this? Is it that? I really try not to be too precise with them, right? And the reason why I'm saying that is because. Price, even though we're trading right off the three minute, the one minute, the five minute, whatever it is, I trade off the three minute. Price moves, okay, off larger time frames, and therefore you'll get these massive wicks through them and so forth. So I really try not to be too precise. I don't want my zones to be massive, right? Because then inevitably it's just when the price gets into it, you might see how a reaction, but by the time it gets out of a zone, you are just, you know, so far in, in the red potentially, depending on, you know, what you're trading, or like I said, how far you're going out with your options expirings. I like to have my zones a little bit tighter. Okay. So that is the first step. What we will do once we get into it, I try not to be too crazy with them. All right. I find out a couple of zones two above price two below price and so forth. Then I will jump down into smaller time frames that I trade off of the three minute. Okay, I'm always looking for that higher time frame confluence. What do I mean by higher time frame confluence? Right. So I want to know where price has been moving over the over the past so many days. By looking at this chart, guys, you can see that we are going sideways, right? So chances are, if we don't break below this, you know, 408 area or above this 415, 
we're not seeing a breakout in any direction and the chance of you know this kind of ping pong chop action is greater right just good to keep that in the back of your mind okay higher time frame confluence is what you call it I'll jump down to these smaller time frames. This is what I trade off of the three minute chart. And these are trades that I had taken, you know, on Friday. Okay. And so you can see where, what it kind of looks like when it comes to the, the day prior, where we're looking at for market open. This is where it comes to how I take a trade going through this right now. So personally, guys, I'm always looking to trade, take trades that have the best risk to reward. Okay. And this is the, 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 the biggest thing that I feel like traders get wrong and I did for quite some time. Everybody's trying to get into a winning trade, okay? And I learned, you learn this from Mark Douglas, if you've done any, you know, training on, uh, you know, the psychology behind, you know, being a profitable trader and what is needed in order to be a profitable trader, you learn very quickly that a trader's job is not to identify whether a trade is going to be profitable or a losing trade, right? We don't know that. This is, you're trying to predict the future. What you're doing is you're, you have created a set of rules, you have back tested a proven strategy, and you, your job is to execute flawlessly, manage your emotions during that trade, and follow your set of rules. So long as you can do that consistently, the outcome is inevitable. Right. And what I mean by that is for me, my win rate is just under 70% over the last, you know, probably 250 trades, but my R multiple is about 2.6 to one. Well, what do I mean by R multiple? So if my average losses altogether divided by, you know, like that total sum, let's say it's, you know, $10,000 in losses by, you know, a hundred trades, whatever, whatever that, that number is, is a hundred dollars each loss on average, my average winning trade is about $260. Okay. So therefore I know my strategy has worked. It's worked quite some, you know, quite some time. I followed, make sure I'm managing my emotions properly. My, my rules are set properly. And therefore, as long as I can identify a setup that gives offers me a very good risk to reward, the outcome is inevitable. It doesn't matter whether it's a losing trade or a winning trade that specific moment. As long as I continue to execute on what I see, I know that the outcome will bring my equity curve moving slowly up to the right, okay? So here is what I look for when we get into these zones. I'm not always looking for a rejection. I'm not always playing reversals. I do like to play reversals because they offer, like I said, guys, a very good risk to reward. If I get in a trade you know, right down here, and then it breaks through, I'm immediately getting out, right? So I'm trying to, I'm not chasing, you're not buying calls after this massive move to the upside that by the time it moves down and you're hoping it bounces off the support and then it never bounces, you're already down 30, 40, you know, 50% in a contract if you're depending on, you know, obviously your expirations. So I really do like to play that. I will also wait for it to see if price breaks through a zone. If I'm getting to an area to where, you know, I don't see a couple of, you know, identifiers, which I'll go over in just a moment, a couple of identifiers that I like and price breaks through that zone, we'll look for a breakthrough, something that we saw earlier in the chart. Want to see it come back down, right? Once what was old resistance will act as new support. That's a very good risk to reward, right? And I will try to get into a trade on there. I think there was one over here, guys. Yeah, this was it, what we look for. You kind of see that, get into that zone. I would not have taken this trade because first of all, I really like to trade wait at least 15 minutes. Once it kind of got up here, we had that, that first candle that could have been a potential for reversal. However, we, you can see there was a lot of uh, uh, you know accumulation in this area would have came up. This would have been a great I, you know a great opportunity to be able to get into it. Obviously, I have some other confluence which are you know uh, other other key levels, which is this green one didn't exactly hit that zone, but it just kind of gives you guys an idea, right? So, what am I looking for when it comes to taking a trade specifically? So, first off, this trade I did not did not take. Okay, it was very quick off the open. You know, it, 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 this is a ten o'clock candle. A lot of times you have you know ten o'clock news. I think we had. Uh, Michigan consumer sentiment. I think it was also a 945, which was the, the uh, global PMI. But we kind of broke into that zone and that zone held. This is a good, you know, uh, indication, okay, that there's still buyers present inside this zone. I didn't take this position right here, okay, because it kind of just got out of that zone a little bit too quick. And you think to yourself, okay, wait a minute, is this kind of like a little bit of a short covering? And then shorts are going to kind of get up here, which, you know, you have a lot of confluence to, to the left, and then it's going to bring it back down. So I didn't get get into that trade very quickly, but, or get into this trade period, right? So this is kind of, you know, just to show you guys, it, it came into my zone, 
but it didn't do anything in that zone. It got out of it a little bit too quickly. I didn't want to chase to the upside because we were still range bound between pre-market high and you know in pre-market low. Once it came to this opportunity again, this is where I entered my trade. So first off, we get into that zone a second time. Now, every single time you know price enters that zone, eventually it gets weaker. What I mean by that, and the reason why supply and de demand zones work, guys, is there are buyers sitting right here off this like 410 level in the zone that have bid set. Okay, and so we get into that zone, right, which obviously we've already gotten to the zone, you know, previously, because that's why the zone is created, but we get into the zone, and unfilled bids are eventually getting filled from buyers. And that's why we move out of it. But what happens when we get into that zone, you know, numerous times, three, four, five times, you run out of buyers, all those bids get filled. And if the selling pressure is strong enough, that's when zones tend to Fail, okay, so what I'm looking for is consolidation around that zone. That's exactly what you have right here. We break into the zone. It is a very bearish candle. You kind of have a doji form, a lot of volume coming through. Look at all that volume coming through. Buyers are still present. There's two candles, three candles, and it's showing, okay, chances are there's a little bit of accumulation going on and we're going to continue to make a move to the upside. This is where I will enter a trade. I'm also looking for other confluences, right? So obviously I have my green lines, which are drawn out right here. These are I, I, um, higher time frame pivotal, pivotal levels, right? So anything hourly and above, hourly, daily, weekly, where price is really reacted strong off of those levels, um, you know, more than, than try and make it at least two times, but more than two times, okay? So that's where these green lines come from. And then obviously the blue is just yesterday high and yesterday low, right? So this is really, really good confluence for me, especially because we're kind of just range bound. It's Friday. I don't think that we're gonna get anything that kind of big of a move, although we might, you never wanna be biased, just good to kind of have it. In the back of your mind, I see these two candles of a reversal, and it offers a really good risk to reward for my strategy. Now, if we broke through, guys, listen, I'm not hoping here. I don't care if it, you know, if news comes out and it shoots up to the right. That's not my job. It's my job is not to identify whether it is a winning trade or a losing trade. So long as I can keep my losses in that, you know, that $100 range, right? In that one multiple, right? And it's not going to a two multiple or three multiple, or if my average loss is say $1,000, okay? We're not, it's not, I'm not letting it go to $3,500. It's within my strategy. It's no problem, right? I will also, I, I will also use EMAs for confluence as well. I really like, you know, EMAs when it comes to uh, when, when price is breaking through, right? So for example, if we broke through here, you know, we kind of consolidated a little bit up. We had a push up. We, let's say we got to this like 413.50 area. Then we came back down. If these EMAs are curling, you know, and it's holding an EMA, I love the 21 EMA. I'm sure you guys may know. It offers a very, very good risk to reward, guys. So a couple things, guys, just, just remember 15 minutes, you can draw your zones out. Um, doesn't have to be crazy. Doesn't have to be, you know, you know, very, very precise. You just formulate a strategy, you know, that works for you guys. It works, you know, and it's very comfortable. Obviously I have a lower zone coming off of here. You saw massive buyers around just under that 409 level. Okay. Two above two below is what I do. And I'm looking for a consolidation, a little bit of a pause in between that zone in order to see either, Hey, listen, buyers are present, sellers are present and so forth. Okay. So right here, as you can see, this was another one. Um, you know, if you were if you were trading this, looking for a, a bit of a re reversal, this is kind of like one of those uh, liquidity grabs, right? So, what I mean by a liquidity grab, and I hope this, this is a little golden nugget for you guys, uh, it's a li liquidity grab right here. You'll see that when price, you know, will come up and it looks like it's a breakout, right? And, and, it, and it goes up to the next high, and this is just a, hitting all of these, you know, sell these uh, short sellers, their stop losses, and then it just comes right back down. Some of the liquidity grab it kind of happens sometimes. What if this would have been offered a good risk to reward um, on this trade, but personally, if you're just playing supply and demand, it didn't really get into that zone, you know, quickly enough. You did have two kind of bearish actually three bearish wicks in that but like i said guys check it out back test it a little bit it offers very 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 good risk to rewards um so guys that's it for this video leave a comment down below let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you in the next one